hello everyone welcome to the channel so in the end of the previous lecture we uh, need to understand a bit of about uh, the atmosphere and how it affects the ability to form an image of the landscape so in this lecture we will discuss the property of an atmosphere and uh, and uh, show how it uh, limits the ability to image the earth's surface in uh, certain wavelength ranges uh, while making an imaging possible at uh, other wavelengths so the most obvious effect of the atmosphere is that it sits between the source of uh, the source energy and the earth's surface and also the between the earth's surface and uh, and the sensor so therefore the energy from the sun the reflecting uh, from a spot on the earth's surface uh, has to travel through the atmospheric columns in uh, both directions so incidentally we have a represented a spot on spot of interest on the ground uh, as a pixel here so in the upcoming slide uh, we will see the sh the effect of uh, atmosphere on the transmission of the radiation is uh, wavelength dependent and most importantly importantly we need to understand whether the radiation can pass to the atmosphere at all so now the atmospheric effects on the wavelength that can be uh, used in the remote sensing so and uh, this is a quite uh, a simple slide and uh, we will spend uh, a bit of time on it so now here in the top uh, it shows an electromagnetic spectrum starting from the uv uh, that is our ultraviolet radiation and uh, followed by we have our visible uh, wavelength and next we have our reflector uh, reflective ir and uh, followed by we have our thermal ir that is thermal infrared and next is followed by millimeter waves and at last is our radio waves so here the electromagnetic spectrum uh, shows from ultraviolet uh, to uh, the long uh, radio waves so in the infrared uh, infrared it is separated by into uh, the reflective uh, infrared that is uh, reflective ir and uh, the thermal infrared that is thermal ir so the ir uh, waves starting from 1 micrometer to 10 micrometers so the ir waves are separated into a reflective ir and thermal ir so the ir here refers to infrared and uh, we have also separately identified the terahertz and the millimeter wave uh, ranges so now uh, note uh, note that together uh, when we group our uh, visible and uh, the reflective uh, infrared wavelength ranges uh, under a single uh, title they are called as uh, the optical wavelengths so now uh, in the bottom half of the slide here we show the transmission of the atmosphere as a function of wavelength so in one side of the graph we are given the transmission of an atmosphere and in another side we given its frequency and sometimes the transmission is uh, expressed as a transmittance or transmissivity and here in the graph if 100% means a full transmission and similarly here the zero percentage uh, means that the atmosphere totally blocks the radiation so zero refers uh, means that the atmosphere totally blocks the radiation so as we can see that this is a very uh, simple graph here so and the only wavelength for which the atmosphere seems to be totally transparent so it is in the range of uh, radio waves so the radio waves is the only wavelength for which the atmosphere seem, seems to be totally transparent so you can able to uh, compare from this so the radio waves uh, the specific atmosphere window that lies in this uh, radio waves wavelength where the atmosphere seems to be totally uh, transparent so uh, it's a, it is in the uh, range of radio waves so well uh, that is very uh, reassuring because uh, it means that a clear atmosphere so this specific area represents a clear atmosphere so uh, basically the the radio waves does not uh, does not affected by uh, atmosphere so now when the terahertz and uh, millimeter wave ranges so you can able to view here we have our tera uh, terahertz and millimeter waves so here the transmittance of the atmosphere is uh, is almost uh, zero so the transmission is blocked here in this specific wave that is in terahertz and millimeter waves so which means the those waves are that is about terahertz and millimeter waves are are almost entirely blocked by the atmosphere so now in the visible and uh, infrared range while the atmosphere is uh, 
is not entirely transparent. It does allow a significant transmission of uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation. And uh, there are certain small selected bands where the radiation is uh, blocked. So, but uh, there are plenty of wavelengths uh, where the good transmission is possible. So you can uh, compare with this particular, uh, the visible and uh, infrared range here with this set of graph here in uh, transmission of atmosphere versus frequency. So you can able to visualize the high level of this graph here indicates the, the certain portion of the visible and uh, the infrared range allows the transmission, but the certain wa wa wavelength of uh, doesn't allow the transmission. But there are plenty of wavelengths uh, where the good transmission is possible. So the probable reason uh, for the atmosphere for, for this particular uh, block of uh, transmission in certain wavelength is due to the atmospheric observing the radiation at certain wavelengths or several and uh, complex. So now uh, at a shorter wavelength uh, the atmos atmospheric ozone is a strong observer. At most uh, other wavelengths, uh, the water vapor and, uh, and carbon dioxide selectively absorbs the radiation as indicated in the diagram. So we can able to visualize it from here. So, uh, so water vapor and carbon dioxide selectively absorbs the radiation. So now uh, at the long radio waves, uh, the layer in that more upper atmosphere are called ionosphere. They significantly refl the reflects the, that is it refracts the radiation so that uh, those frequency are also unusable for imaging purposes. The wavelength ra ranges uh, a large or a small over which the atmosphere shows a good transmittance or called as an atmospheric window. So this slide just shows a bit more uh, details as we noted on our previous slide. So the main atmospheric constitute that causes an absorption in optical wavelengths are the water vapor and carbon dioxide. And oxygen and uh, ozone have a less impact comparatively compared to uh, water vapor and carbon dioxide. So the principal uh, principal atmospheric constitute which observes radiation uh, in the ranges of interest to the remote sensing imaging or the water vapor and carbon dioxide. So this slide uh, the graph shows uh, the transmissivity or the transmittance of those two constitutes over the visible and infrared uh, wavelengths. So you can able to uh, see that and uh, along with the transmissivity of uh, oxygen and ozone as seen uh, here, you can able to uh, see here. So the oxygen uh, and ozone are less important than the water vapor and carbon dioxide at those uh, wavelengths uh, that is in uh, that visible and uh, reflected infrared uh, wavelengths. So you can be able to clearly compare between this uh, two graphs that is. In water vapor and carbon dioxide, you can able to observe the transmission gets uh, very low in certain wavelengths. Uh, you can observe here in the water vapor graph here. So the transmissivity with the wavelength. So similarly in carbon dioxide uh, graph here, the transmissivity versus wavelength here, the certain portion of this uh, wavelength has uh, that is in uh, the reflected infrared region. So you can uh, compare from here. It is reflected infrared region, this part of the area and this part of the area is visible uh, wave, wavelength. So in certain portion of uh, reflected infrared and uh, carbon dioxide as uh, the transmission is uh, is pretty low compared to uh, the ozone and oxygen. So in ozone and oxygen, the transmission is uh, comparatively very high uh, with that of uh, water vapor and carbon dioxide. So uh, by way of summary, uh, we can uh, conclude that the most suitable range of uh, wavelength for uh, imaging the Earth's surface through its atmosphere are the visible and the lower end of the reflective infrared range and sometimes are called as uh, near infrared. So as a result, uh, if you examine the optical sensors uh, used on most remote uh, sensing satellites, uh, we will see that they tend to have uh, imaging capabilities uh, somewhere within the broad range. And however, we will see that there are other wavelengths that uh, can be used uh, if if uh, we re-examine the transmission property of the atmosphere of the full wavelength ranges. So now, uh, returning to our previous uh, graph, uh, we see that there is a reasonably good atmospheric window in the thermal infrared, that is uh, the heat range. So you can able to view here in the thermal IR and uh, exceptionally a good transmission for radio waves. So the thermal uh, remote sensing satellite, uh, that is uh, those that detects the heat emanating from 
the Earth's surface operates with the wavelengths uh, in the range of about 3 to 5 uh, micrometers and uh, those satellites can form a heat maps of the Earth's surface and, uh, and are particularly good for detecting the burning uh, wildfires and uh, because uh, there is uh, very little uh, natural radio energy uh, emanating from the Earth's surface itself it is uh, usual to uh, irradiate the surface with an artificial source of energy if we uh, wish to take an advantage of a very broad atmospheric uh, windows in the radio wave range the remote sensing platform then uh, carries a radio receiver which is so configured that it forms an image of the surface at the radio wave links and uh, that is a basis uh, for a very large field of uh, radar in remote sensing so the radio wavelengths uh, is, is a basically a very large field of uh, radio remote sensing that is radar remote sensing and sometimes we do form an images of the natural uh, the microwave emissions of the surface but uh, because the energy levels are so low they uh, tend to have a very poor spatial resolution so the key points that is covered in this lecture is if we image from the space we have the we have to be aware that the atmosphere selectively absorbs some wavelength the water vapor and carbon dioxide are the main observers in optical remote sensing so some part of the electromagnetic spectrum is blocked entirely and uh, cannot be used for imaging the earth's surface the wave bands of the sensors are generally chosen to lie in the atmospheric window in which there is a good atmospheric transmission a large atmospheric window available in the radio uh, range of wavelengths means uh, we can uh, image the earth with uh, microwave radiation which is the basis of our uh, basis of radar uh, remote sensing and if there were not a good atmospheric window at uh, the radio wavelengths we could not able to uh, communicate to the satellites so in the next lecture we'll see the what are the platforms are used for imaging the earth's surface so in this video we have covered an atmospheric layer so in the next video we will focus on what are the platforms are used for imaging the earth's surface so thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel and uh, give us a like